Okay, we're going to look at the possibility or the probability of getting a small straight in Yahtzee with one roll. This is a pretty tricky um, question because a couple things make it trickier than some of the other questions. Um, for one thing, you're only using four of the five dice to get a small straight, right? It's one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, or three, four, five, six. So you have to consider what the other die can be. Uh, is it a repeat of one of those numbers? Is it another number? Um, <clears throat> And depending on the situation, you know, it kind of makes the counting a little bit different, which makes it tricky. But for starters, when you roll five dice in Yahtzee, uh, if you treat each die as a separate entity, which is the easier way to do this, um, then there are six to the fifth possibilities. And, and the reason you want to, the reason that's the better way to treat this is because that way each of those six to the fifth outcomes are equally likely, right? Um, if you treat each die as a separate uh, thing that can occur. Um, so that just means that when we're counting the ways to get a small straight, we have to keep that in mind. We're, we're looking at permutations. Each die is separate. You can imagine the five dice being different colors, or die one, die two, die three, die four, and die five. Or maybe it's easier if you call them A, B, C, D, and E, since they're going to have number outcomes um, to keep them straight. So um, first of all, there are three different small straights that are possible, just like in terms of the numbers that would show up. Right, you can have one through four, two through five, and three through six. So we need to keep that in, in mind. And then um, it's thinking about that other die. Um, I'm going to kind of include it up here uh, in the possibilities here. So the other die, if you have one, two, three, four, you could have uh, the other die. Here, let me label this other die. You could have um, one, two, three, or four. Right, one, two three or four. You can't really have five. Um, if you did, it's a different roll. And then um, six. Okay, what I mean by it's another roll is if you have five for the other die, now it's not really a small straight, it's a large straight, right? So I'm actually going to let me specify here, but not large straight. Okay. So one, two, three, four, and six. Um, with a middle straight, this one's a little different though, right? Because now you can't get a one or a six for the other die, right? So the only possibilities for the other die are the repeats, the, the doubles of one of the other numbers. So two, three, four, and five. And then here you could have the one, you can't have the two, and you can have the three, four, five, or six. So it's actually like 14 different small straights that are possible when you look at all five dice, right? And that's from a combinations standpoint. 14 combinations of dice that make a small straight. But again, we need to count the permutations because six to the fifth is permutations. So now we need to like consider, okay, how many ways can this happen? And this work gets a little bit tricky still is because um, <clears throat> whether you have a repeat of a number here or a different number makes the counting different. So, um, first of all, which, which outcomes here kind of stand out, right? Which other die? Um, there, there's two of these that are different from the rest, right? So four in each of these sets is a repeat of something in the straight. And then the only ones that aren't are the six and the one. So we have to count those differently. Okay, in fact, those are the easier ones to count. So the uh, other die not being a repeat, let's start there other die not a repeat so we're talking about the one and the six okay so there are two ways right there's one two three four six and one three four five six two combinations of dice and then what you have are five different dice right um so you have for, for each of those, one, two, three, four, six, and one, three, four, five, six, you have five different values to show up on the dice. And so all we have to do is count the number of ways that can occur on the five dice. Well, that's two times five P five, right? How many different orders are there for those five outcomes? How many different permutations of one, two, three, four, and six are there? Or one, three, four, five, and six. And it's the same for either combination, right? 
there's 5p5, which is 5 factorial. Basically, what we're doing is we're saying, here's your five dice. We know what the five values on them are going to be. It's either 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, or 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. And, um, you know, how many different orders, how many different ways can it occur with those five dice? Well, you have five possibilities for the first die, right? You can pick any of those five numbers to put on the first die. Once you pick one, then you have four possibilities, and then three, and then two, and then one. Those are the number of orders of five different dice that can occur. And that's 120. So that's actually 240 total when you multiply by two because that's two of these possibilities. Okay, so this is where the other die does not repeat. Okay, now, if the other if the other die, by the other die again I mean the one that's not in the large in the small straight, if that is a repeat, the fifth die is a repeat. Now you have your straight. You have one, two, three, four, or two, three, four, five, or three, four, five, six, and you have another die that is a repeat of one of those, right? So you have like A, B, C, D, D, right? And it doesn't really matter whether I call this fifth one D or C or B or A, it doesn't make a difference, because who's to say D has to be like the last one in the sequence? The idea is it could be a repeat of any of those, right? And so we need a way to count this. Um, so first of all, the combinations, now let me just point out, for all three of these it's the same, right? That other die could be a repeat of any of the four in the straight. So I don't have to do these three separately. So I'm just going to multiply three out front. There are three ways to do it. Three combinations of the straight itself. Like straight's possible. And then, with any one of those combinations, how many choices do I have for what, which number that other die is? Well, four, right? Once you pick one of these straights, one, two, three, four, now for the fifth die, I have a choice. I, I, that fifth die could either be a one, a two, a three, or a four. So now there's four possibilities there. And then we need to look at the placements, okay? So these we've got the combinations covered here, right? There are three different straights possible <clears throat> in terms of combinations, and four different, for each of those straights, four different choices of that other die. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we just need the orders, and this is a little trickier. <coughs> Excuse me, because again, it's not just five p five. One of these is the same as another. So, so since one of the dies is a repeat of one of the others, um, again, we've got the combinations, right? There's these three different straights times four different choices for each of those as to what the fourth, or sorry, the fifth die could um, be a repeat of. Um, so all we're doing now is taking those five dice, where two of them are the same as each other and three are different, and saying how many different orders are possible. So what you want to do is imagine the five dice and think of where you can place these. And when I do this, I usually like to start by placing the, the repeat things, personally. Um, that might not even be the easiest way. I'll show you the other way in a second. But um, basically, I have five dice to choose from, and I have to pick two of the five dice to be my uh, my repeats. So five choose two, and that gets me my D, D. And it could be there, but it could also be D, D, or D, D, or D, D, right? Uh, that's what this counts, is the number of different ways to do it. And that's just five times four divided by two, so it's ten, right? I'll show you that in a second, that computation. Um, so there's 10 to, right? I could either have first and second, first and third, first and fourth, first and fifth, second and third, second and fourth, second and fifth, third and fourth, third and fifth, or fourth and fifth. Those are the 10 possibilities. And then I have to place the remaining three dice, which are all different from each other. So I have three choices for where to put A, and then I have two choices for where to put B, and then I have one remaining choice for where to put C. No choice really at all. And so that's it. Um, so these were the combinations, and then, I shouldn't say combinations anymore, because now I've added in the permutations, that's what these do, 
these give you the permutations. Okay, and so um, this is actually, like I said, 3 times 4 times 10 times 3 times 2. So that's um, 6 times 12 is 72 times 10 is 720. Um, so that's it. There's 960 ways. I'll, I'll put that in a second. Um, 960 ways to roll a small straight. Um, I mentioned uh, a couple things. One, I was going to show you how to do it if we if we did these first. Uh, so, um, first of all, computing five choose two. Five choose two is five factorial over um, three factorial times two factorial. Right? Five minus two factorial and two factorial on the bottom. So that's five times four, and then three factorial reduces with that three factorial divided by 2 factorial. And so that's how I got the 5 times 4 divided by 2. Okay, Anything choose 2 is like that. 15 choose 2 is 15 times 14 divided by 2. 73 choose 2 is 73 times 72 divided by 2. All right. Also, um, I placed the two d's first. That's where the 5 choose 2 came from. But I also could have instead placed the a, b, and c first. So if I did that, I would have had 5 choices for a, four choices for B, three choices for C, and then no choices left for the two Ds, right? They would just have to go in the last two remaining slots. So five times four times three is 20 times three is 60, and that's what this is, right? 10 times three times two is also 60. So it comes out the same either way that you do it. So there are 720 small straights where one die is a repeat of one of the other ones. And there are 240 small straights where the one where the fifth die is not a repeat, right? Where it's with a one or six to go with um, a one with a three, four, five, six, or a six with a one, two, three, four. Together, that makes 960 small straights. Um, that are not large straights, right? Um, and there are 6 to the 5th, which I think is 7,776. Uh, so 6 to the 5th total rolls possible. So we got 960 divided by 7776 is the probability of getting a small straight on one roll. which is not very unlikely, right? That's almost 1,000 out of almost 8,000. So it's about a 1 in 8 chance. Well, it's like 12%-ish, somewhere in there. Uh, we could reduce that. We could turn it into a decimal, whatever. But, um, I mean, if you think about it, that's not a very unlikely thing, right? Roll five dice. What are the chances that you're going to have one of these outcomes on four of the dice? I, it's going to happen a fair bit. And if you sit down and roll five dice, you know, do it like 10 times, you'll probably get a small straight on at least one of them. Do it 20 times, you should probably get it a couple of times. At least once, though, it would be pretty unlikely to roll five dice 20 times and not have it happen at all. All right, so that's my probability of a small straight in one roll.